exploits, life hacks, cheats. There's been a number of things that the community took advantage of by accident or on purpose that Supercell didn't think was very cash money. Because of that, many strategies and features have been removed so that the game could be played the way Supercell intended. Luckily, most of these were for the better, and actually two of these are still in the game today. But that being said, we're going to be talking about some things that was never intended to be a thing and see what the aftermath was. So. Let's get right into it. Let's do this. No one likes losing resources when they go offline. The feeling of going offline with full storages and no shields is horrible. But luckily over the years we've seen updates that aim to improve this. Like storing a percent of it in the town hall, having a secondary storage, the treasury that no one can steal from, or even the loot card that gives you some of the resources stolen back. But if you go back far enough in Clash of Clans history, you'll notice that neither of these things existed before 2015 and 2016. There was though, a small exploit hiding resources this was mostly done in the early days when troops used to cost much much more than they do today well at least before they became free you basically hit a lot of your elixir in your barracks by queuing expensive troops and that elixir couldn't be stolen and since troops cost a lot back then you could hide hundreds of thousands of elixir if you just train say a full barracks of pekkas or even better since the wallbreakers used to be one housing space and cost a great deal depending on your town hall level a barracks full of wallbreakers will allow you to hide over 600,000 elixir when you were back online you would simply remove the wallbreakers from the queue and get your elixir back. This wasn't only for elixir though, this was possible with gold. In 2012, canceling an upgrade will give you 100% of the resources back. So, you guessed it, that's exactly what people did. Upgrade a lot of stuff before going offline and cancel them when they were back. As great of a strategy as it was, both of them became ineffective with patches and time. Troops became much cheaper, so hiding your elixir wasn't even worth the effort anymore, and upgrades were changed to give only 50% of the resources back. Still, this is a perfect example of exploits and quick life hacks that became part of the game and the way players play the game. Speaking of exploits turned into strategies, strategy is what today's sponsor is all about. King God Castle is an amazing free to play auto battle defense game that I've been playing and boy is it fun. You basically have to defend your castle against your enemy and in between waves you can summon more heroes to deploy or merge with them to upgrade their tier. Use equipment you found and accept deals that make your level harder in return for a reward that may help you get even more rewards. And my favorite, the Wandering Trader. Always has some sweet deals up its sleeve. There's a lot of strategy involved here and when you play the right moves it's a heck of an experience. The game starts super casual, but once you get deep into the game, unlocking characters, which by the way, there are over 30 of them, there are so many tactical points that players can focus on and enjoy. Now, there's currently a sweet deal if you download the game right now with my link down below on iOS and Android, you can get a new hero scroll up until November 10th. So don't miss out on it, but even if you miss it, definitely go ahead and check out the game. Again, thank you to King God Castle for sponsoring this video. Queen Walk. One of the greatest strategies in Clash of Clans history. But did you know this started off as a secret OP way to win wars? Almost like an exploit. Well, now you know. Queen Walk was discovered sometime in 2014 after Clan Wars was added. Some players saw that they were getting wrecked by a mysterious strategy, which consisted of the Queen backed by a lot of healers as the first part of a greater attack. Now, back in the day, this would have easily been mistaken for a troll attack. But this was no troll attack. This was a real strategy. This was known as Queen Walk. Its popularity was not an overnight sensation though. In fact, a lot of people were confused on what it was supposed to be. In September of 2014, the healer's AI was reworked to now heal the same target more often. And in February of 2015, she no longer triggered air traps. Over time, the Queen Walk strategy became a very viable and OP way to win at wars. It would end up branching off into different variations. I mean, how many Queen Walk variations are there? But all of this was never intended. Supercell was caught off guard, according to Galadon, in an old video he made. Admittedly, the Clash of Clans team didn't really anticipate. Uh, I can remember talking to them uh, years ago when Queen Walks first started happening. Uh, they were just shocked. They were surprised. This was clearly not what they intended the healers to be used for, but they knew if they removed it altogether, the community would be upset about it. After all, they were in too deep. 
why remove it? Now the strategy was nerfed many times to try and reduce its effectiveness because at the time it was very OP, but they weren't going to remove it though. Because at the end of the day, even though this wasn't how they intended the healers and heroes to be used, it still added some diversity into the game. After some nerfs and patches, the strategy was balanced and they even added variations of Queen Walk into practice modes. Today, the strategy is cemented into the game as one of the earliest unintended strategies that is still used today. Have you ever been in a war and the enemy side has a random Town Hall 11 at the bottom of the clan and when you check it out, it's some rush base? Well, that's not exactly a rush base. It's an engineered base. And once upon a time, they used to be all over the place in clan wars. The way this was possible to do is because years ago, you didn't need to build every building to move on to the next Town Hall. So people could build bases like this without any issue. Today, it may seem weird, but back then, this was pretty common. So you had bases like this, specifically built to exploit the Clan Wars matchmaking, and boy did it work. It messed up matchmaking so bad, and there were even entire clans with bases like this. The purpose of a base like this was to trick the matchmaking into thinking this was a fair matchup against a lower Town Hall player, while having the essentials to have a maxed army, like army camps, maxed out barracks, maxed heroes. So now, the clan with the engineer base has one account that's able to 3 star bases way higher than their mirror. Meaning that the clan has better, lower players. This took over clan wars for a very long time. It became a full time strategy on how to win wars. Yes, it was considered kind of cheating, but not really at the same time. They weren't doing anything wrong, they were just fooling the matchmaking. But finally, in June of 2018, Supercell released an update requiring all buildings to be placed in order to move on to the next town hall. Ever since, these bases are no longer possible to make. And even though some players still use their old engineered Town Hall 11 bases for war, they're starting to fade into irrelevance as more and more Town Halls are added into the game. The engineered Town Hall 11 isn't as good as one from six years ago. Back then, it had a purpose. Now, it's just some really bad Town Hall 11. So yeah, an exploit turned into a strategy. But luckily, Supercell did something about it. When Dark Elixir was introduced, it quickly became the most sought after resource in the game. Everyone wanted Dark Elixir, so if you had a full storage of it, you bet that somebody was going to come and steal it. It was almost certain that somebody would attack you for that Dark Elixir. So people put these Dark Elixir storages right in the middle of the base to make it harder to steal. But at the same time, they figured out that, wait a second, can't someone just drop some lightning spells here and call it a day? Yes. Yes, they could, and boy did it catch on really fast. This became a full-on strategy to get Dark Elixir fast, especially in the lower Town Hall levels like Town Hall 7. Town Hall 7 had no drill back in the day. You had to attack for it, but it was way easier to just drop lightning spells rather than attacking for it. Lightning spells guaranteed Dark Elixir. Attacking did not. So lightning Dark Elixir storages was the easiest way to get Dark Elixir. It was like you were trading Elixir for it. In 2015 though, almost three years after Dark Elixir was added into the game, Supercell finally put an end to the strategy by giving all storages immunity to the lightning spell. Yes, all storages. Though it wasn't much of an issue for gold and elixir in the first place because there were more of them. It wasn't the same as having one massive location for one resource. It was basically asking to get zapped. Anyways, ever since, the strategy obviously has faded away. But since spells cost nothing now, dropping them on full collectors is making a comeback. But it's not an issue since you're not stealing resources they have, so I mean, that's alright. Trophy pushing can be fun and yield great rewards like achievements or finding a sweet spot to farm in. But it can also get competitive for the real trophy pushers. If you've gone pretty far in trophies, you may have noticed that finding a player takes longer, like a few minutes. Years back, this way could easily take hours or even worse. Sometimes you wouldn't find anyone at all. Now, there were many reasons why you wouldn't be able to find a player, but I don't want to go off topic too much. It basically boiled down to not enough players to attack. The higher you went, the less less people there was. This will be dubbed by the community as clouding, and it was a thing as far back as when people started to push their way to the leaderboards. Clouding was horrible. It was never intended by the developers to be this way, but because they couldn't directly solve the problem, clouding just became part of the game. If you wanted to push to the leaderboards, you'd have to cloud. It was part of the process and it became normal. 
Years went by with small patches here and there trying to fix the issue, but the main issue persisted. So in an effort to help the clouders, they added features like a chat that would pop up after some time, or dark clouds, or a sound that would play when you finally found a match. But finally, at the end of 2018, Supercell announced that they were working on a fix called Operation Blue Skies. This wouldn't be revealed until the summer of 2019, when they finally revealed that they were reworking the entire Legends League. It's great that they finally fixed it, but it'll go down in Clash of Clans history as one of the worst unintended disasters. For a very long time after the game went global, farming had a different meaning than it did today. You likely heard of me talk about it a million times, but I couldn't make a video on this topic without mentioning town hall sniping, old school farming, and free shields. Now they're all combined because they all worked because the other one was possible. It started with players leaving the town hall outside the village because they found out that if the enemy took the town hall, they get a free shield, and the enemy gets free trophies. It was a very quick way to get trophies, and for the defender, it was a very quick way to get a shield, to defend your loot. You leave the town hall outside in hopes whoever attacks only wants trophies, and they leave your loot alone. And then, with your free shield, you can go offline and not worry about anyone touching your precious resources. It was a win-win for both the player and the attacker. More often than not, this is exactly what happened. This remained this way for years, and this was all farmers knew. This was farming, this was the correct way to farm, but it wasn't the way Supercell wanted the game to be played. They knew that the longer they waited to do something about it, the more likely it would be impossible to remove due to backlash. So in late 2015 with the Town Hall 11 update, they rolled out some changes that put a stop to this farming strategy. Taking the Town Hall would no longer give a free shield. In fact, it wouldn't even give the attacker a win because the percent was now too low to count. On top of all that, the Town Hall now held loot. So if you lost your town hall, you would lose loot. Not very cash money for farming. So now, leaving the town hall outside was the worst thing you could do for farming and trophy pushing. So yeah, the once beloved strategy was removed. But maybe it was for the better as most people have forgotten about it and matchmaking has actually improved. I think the game is arguably better than it was back then. I think a lot of people are just remembering the nostalgia and how easy it was to farm. Let me know what you think down below. Request and leave clans have been sort of a normal part of the game now. If you want some troops, request and leave. But if you're a permanent member of the clan or just stopping by to fill requests, this can be a very easy way to get XP. It is the most effective way of XP farming and the reason people have been able to reach levels like 400 or 500. But this wasn't always the case and definitely not how Supercell intended people to level up. But the problem is, Supercell never did anything about it. And it's now part of the game. It'd be awkward if they did something about it now, like 10 years later. Plus, levels have very little use, if any at all. So that's probably why they just left it alone. I'm pretty sure if levels had a use, these clans would have been dealed with, but it doesn't. So they never deal with it. So even though it was unintended, it just became part of the game because who cares? This one is pretty small as it's still in the game and they've remained the exact same for years, but still cool. So guys, that is my list of unintended features or exploits or life hacks that became features in the game or strategies or the norm really hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys think i missed anything feel free to comment it down below i'm interested to hear i had a couple more things that i wanted to mention but i trimmed the video down simply because it just weren't things that i thought were exploits or life hacks or anything like that anyways with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's video please like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching have a gaming out peace